back so soon? Well, yes I am. 14 TTMs in under a week. Gotta get these videos pumped out so they're not an hour long. So let's go ahead and jump into some stuff. First off guys, shuffletrades.com. Go check it out. Uh, send in any autograph card and you'll get another person's random trade back. This is the hit trade for this month. So if you want a chance to get this Hulk Hogan certified autograph card, just send a trade in. Again, shuffletrades.com. Now, I do have a couple purchases to show you. Not all of them, just a couple. We're cutting the purchases down to the cool stuff, basically. Uh, first off, this is a Brett Phillips certified auto. And uh, he, of course, was the hero in the World Series this year. His team didn't win. He was on Tampa. But an amazing World Series moment. Just blew my mind. And uh, I had to pick it up. It was really a really good price. It was a couple bucks, I think, for the certified auto. So let's go ahead and get that in the archives book. All right, and another pickup I got is a JSA certified autograph card. It's a heritage card out of WWE. Um, this is 2005. These older WWE heritage cards are actually hard to come by. I've been trying to pick a few up so I can send some TTM, and they're quite pricey. Uh, this is Jimmy Hart, the mouth of the South. So uh, signed nicely there, and it does come with a JSA certification and has the JSA sticker there on the back. Uh, not that that matters a whole bunch, but it, it helps, uh, you know, boost your confidence and authenticity. Still need to do your own research. We always preach that, right? So let's go ahead and get that in the book. It's gonna go right here next to Cowboy Bob Orton. Oh yeah! <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, and one last purchase to show you guys. This is a Hall of Famer and it's a certified auto and it was a price that I could not turn down. Um, I believe this was a slightly under 30 bucks. So this is Vlad Guerrero. So uh, to get a Vladdy Hall of Famer certified auto for under 30 bucks, I, I couldn't turn it down. It does have some chipping there on the side, but with these 2001 archive cards, uh, they just show damage automatically. If you ding it at all, it's gonna show damage. All right, on to TTMs, and we have 14 TTMs to show you with two failures. Yes, I'm gonna show you a couple failures that came in. Uh, RTSs, most of those are private address tries. I don't show those to you guys, but uh, these were not. These were just sent back unsigned. So the first one, uh, Mike Greenwell, who's known for notably not signing TTM, but uh, not only didn't sign TTM, just mauled my card to death. And I don't know if this was the mail or him, but uh, yeah, if uh, you want a card uh, creased by Mike Greenwell, there you go. Um, but yeah, it was worth a shot. Uh, lost a card in, in, the, in the try, but that's okay. And uh, this guy who used to sign, I believe, for free, but he personalized it and it was a one per. Well, he's changed his policy now and he does not sign for free. Uh, this is Mr. Mark Witten. And he actually sent this along. So 15 per for baseball cards. Probably not going to do that for Mark. Um, maybe down the line, but not right now. And did not sign this rookie card here. So this is one of those uh, baseball magazine rookie cards. So we'll see if Phil Clark signs. I don't think he does. I think Mark was the only one that signed on this. And now he doesn't. So, well, he does for 15 bucks. So. All right, on to the successes. And this first one's a little weird because this guy is a pretty dang good signer and he signed one of two. I think the two cards got stuck together. Uh, it's actually two custom cards. So these were made, they did not exist. Uh, it's not reprints. These are custom cards that fans made. I reprinted the custom cards, but this is Dave Guisti, Guisti, Guisti. I'm not sure how to say it, but uh, great signer signed one of two. Uh, as I said earlier though, these kind of stick together. I'm sure he pulled it all out as one. You can't see, I'm trying to slide these apart. They won't come apart. So I'll probably just resend the second one uh, out to get signed. Uh, I, I'm sure he just didn't see it, but signed one of two. And uh, some people were asking what ACEO stands for. Um, some people use that term when it comes to custom cards. It's basically, uh, stands for art cards, editions, and originals. So, 
some people use their own art to make trading cards and trade with other people and those are known as ACEO cards. Well, people who started creating custom baseball cards with new photos on old designs started using that term, even though it's a stretch, uh, ACEO cards tend to lean more in the art side with paint and other different uh, products, not necessarily just doing Photoshop, quick Photoshop. I, I could see something that's like heavily Photoshop being an ACEO, but something that's a quick Photoshop like this, probably not technically ACEO, but it's still used, you know, for these cards. So that's what that means. All right, let's go ahead and get this in the book and this one will go back out. All right, and Dave's gonna sit next to Mr. Dave Fleming. Oh yeah! Okay, next up we have a 3-3 return from John Orton. John was a player for the Angels and he signed 3-3, including two baseball magazine rookie cards. So these are the 69 rookie designs. So we'll put this one to the side and scribe them to my daughter like I asked to, so that was nice. And uh, we'll get these in the book. So Orton's going to sit next to Diekman. Next, we have a guy who's one per, so it's a one of one return, and it is a repeat success. Uh, wanted to get an oddball team, and it also works for the archive project, but I think I'm going to go ahead and stick it in the oddball project. This is Mr. Lou Pinella, and this is him on the Orioles. Uh, this card did not exist. Again, it's a custom card that was made by a fan, and uh, he actually played only four games for the Orioles. So sign that perfectly right there, and we'll put that in the oddball book at the end of the episode. All right, next up is a guy who has signed great for years. I wrote to him a long time ago when I was a kid, but I haven't wrote to, wrote to him since. Uh, found three great cards, including one goofball card to send, and wish I would have sent the survey for him to fill out, asking like what were the circumstances behind it, um, or what he thought of the card when it came out. But again, I forgot. So uh, let's go ahead and show these off. Sign them great to my daughter. This one is those studio credit cards that I love so much. I have several of those signed. So uh, inscribed to my daughter there and signed nicely. Uh, this is, by the way, Greg Gagne. And sign this awesome EXL card. I uh, love these cards. This is the green version. I think there's a blue version. I can't remember the variants on this. But uh, this is when cards were starting to get funky in the mid-90s. Uh, again, sign that one to my daughter there. And then we have the goofball card. And uh, this is him going, oh! And he inscribed it, oh! Because uh, if you can see the look on his face, it is great. So sign that goofball card for uh, my daughter perfectly. And that will go in the book at the end of the video. Okay, next up we have two more custom cards. These are going in the archive project. This is George Stone and uh, sign these two cards here. Again, these were made by fans. Uh, the backs are blank and uh, I actually printed these off myself. So they turn out pretty nicely. I'm kind of getting these customs down pat. Okay, and it looks like we haven't had one of these in a while, so he's gonna sit next to Alex Trebek. Oh yeah! Rest in peace. All right, next up is another TTM legend. This guy has signed great for years and signed four of four perfectly for me and my daughter. This is Mr. Mike Cameron, and man, oh man, look at this a beautiful card. Signed it perfectly where the signature is on the card. I love that. And uh, signed this Fleer Tradition, which of course is a ripoff of Tops, and this UD Vintage, which is also a ripoff of Tops, and this other UD Vintage, which is a cool card because he's actually signing an autograph. So that could e either go in Goofball or Archive. I think it's gonna go in Archive. Um, I may pick up another down the line to put in Goofball, but uh, let's get these in the book. All right, he's gonna sit under Mr. Hank Barr. Oh, yeah. And he's going to sit next to Mr. Eddie Tobinsey. Oh, yeah. And he's going to sit under Mr. Phil Necro. Oh, yeah. Rest in peace. And sit next to Mr. Jason Kittness. Oh, yeah. Next, we have a Hall of Famer who charges a $5 fee. Yes, you heard me right. A Hall of Famer for five bucks. You can't turn that down. 
sent an ACEO custom guard. We just went over what that means. This one is one I bought off of eBay and the quality is very poor. Uh, that's kind of why I started printing my own because I can print them better than I can buy them and they're more expensive when you buy them. S a few sellers have good quality cards, but not many. This is Mr. Whitey Herzog. I was testing out some different suppliers to test quality. This guy failed. It is basically on regular cardstock paper. Just uh, not great. Got the Washington Senators logo on the back. Um, but Whitey did sign it there and this card did not exist. This was made by a fan. So let's get it in the book. All right, he's gonna sit under Mr. Andrew Jones. So this is actually an archive card for wrestling, but it doesn't match any other design for any other sport. I'm gonna hold off on putting it in the book. I may put it in the back of the uh, odd, like the Fleer Donruss uh, score um, archive book for now. Um, since it's only a wrestling design, it may not get a page, but we'll see. Next up, we have a paid return. This is another Hall of Famer for $10 per. Again, guys, these Hall of Famers for 10 bucks, you can't pass that up. If you got cool cards, send them off ASAP. This is Mr. Jim Rice, signed three of three. And look what we got here, guys. We have a talking baseball card, sports talk. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and play that for you right now. Tori, and this is Baseball Talk. Today we'll talk baseball with Jim Rice. Jim came to the Red Sox in 1974 knowing that he would one day play left field, a position played regularly by just two men over the last 40 years, Ted Williams and Carl Yastrzemski. I think that was a feeling that I don't think any player can explain or put emphasis on. Um, as far as going to a major league ballpark and playing that ballpark his first day, I think it was intimidating for me to play behind a guy like Carl Yaskrimski in left field. As far as being a designated hitter at the time, uh, that wasn't difficult at all because the only thing you had to do was go up and pick up the bat and uh, swing and, and play the game. But when you had to go out and play defense and play against the wall, it was a different story. In 1978, Jim had the kind of season most players can only dream about as he led the league in six offensive categories en route to being named the league's most valuable player. When I uh, hit 40 home runs, uh, that was, that was something that I had never dreamt of. I think the year before, I hit 39 or something like that, and I had never thought about hitting 40 home runs. It just happened. I think an athlete goes out and plays the game like he know how and plays as hard as he can. He doesn't realize what kind of statistics he can put up on the board. And, of course, the Red Sox team that we had back in 78, we had about four or five guys with 30 home runs or better. And we, have a, we had a very productive uh, season. We had a, a very productive ball club as far as scoring runs. A broken left hand kept Jim out of the World Series in 1975. But he made it in 86 with a Red Sox team that few picked to win. We had a little thing to call Kangaroo Court when we got Don Baylor that if you not if you don't advance the guy from second base, it costs you $5. If the guy's on third base, you don't get him in, it's $5. And that was sort of a fun year. Uh, not only uh, being predicted to come in last, but to go out and have the year that we had. And made, it didn't really make me do things that I had done in previous years, but I sort of wanted to do, whereas you sacrifice yourself, not necessarily going for the home run ball, but hit the ball to the right side. That's more of my game, just hit the ball where it's pitch and go out and have fun. Thanks, Jim. For Baseball Talk, I'm Joe Torrey. Of course, I absolutely love these sports talk cards. Um, the stories are a little corny, the voices are a little high-pitched, but they're just a unique concept from the 80s. Of course, the photo is different. That's why they qualify for the Archives Project. Uh, it's not the same photo as the 1989 Topps cards. So let's go ahead and get these in the book. All right, and we're gonna put this 1953 style card in. Booyah! And Jim's going to sit next to Mr. Taylor Ward. Oh yeah! And I had to add another special page for the oversized oh yeah. sports talk cards. Next up is another Hall of Famer that's $10 per. I got a 4 of 4 success from him. I'm trying to get all the archive stuff done, but man oh man, he has a lot of archive cards. Um, if I were to do them all at once, I'd be broke. So here's the 4 of 4 success from Mr. Brooks Robinson. This is a Donruss archive. 
Then we have this sports design card out of 1986, which is a remake or re rendition of the 1969 set. Then we have the Topps Pristine cards. My gosh, uh, these are amazing. This one is actually one of the uncirculated cards that is numbered out of 549, but they sign beautifully. The signatures hold on them. Uh, almost any pen that they use other than ballpoint pen, um, it, it all looks great. So uh, everything pops with the white background. And uh, you can see this one has some like up and down action with it because it was in the uncirculated container for so long. Uh, sometimes the heat kind of gets to it and the cards warp a bit, but that's okay. Uh, I'm still happy to have it signed. And then the last one is a Topps Archive card. Uh, I'm not sure which year, but all right, so let's go ahead and get these in the book. All right, we had to move some cards around, but Brooks is gonna sit under Mr. Jason Kipnis. Oh yeah! With the Topps pristine set, he's gonna sit next to Mr. Oh, Mike yeah. Cameron. And in the 77 set, he's going to sit next to oh, yeah. Mr. Davey Lopes. Next, we have a guy who some may consider a coaching goat in his sport. Um, won numerous championships, and he's been a great TTMer. I'm kind of surprised more people don't write to him, to, to tell you the truth. But sent two custom cards. These were actually created by me, so I didn't steal anybody's design. Uh, these were created by me through my GIMP skills. Uh, GIMP is a free Photoshop alternative, if you don't know, so. Um, this is Mr. Scotty Bowman. So, signed two of two. And again, these were created in Photoshop by me. We'll just call it GIMP Photoshop. It makes it easier for you guys. Um, also added a fun little back, so. Uh, these do have a back, they're the same. I, I, there's no re reason to switch it up. I just took a actual back from one of his cards and put that on cardstock and uh, added it to the um, the custom on the front. So these turned out real nice. This smeared a bit. Um, so, and his signature is getting a little more simpler. Um, he is getting up there in age, guys. So if, you, if you're into hockey and you haven't wrote to Scotty Bowman, do it now because he is a TTM goat along possibly a, a hockey coach goat. And Scotty's gonna sit next to Mr. Mike Cameron. Yeah. And he's also gonna sit next to Mr. George Stone. Oh yeah! Inscribe this one to my daughter, by the way. Next up, we have a hit the deck success and a success from that weird Jamaica Heritage set where it highlights events and notable people from America's past. A lot of them have passed away, so you have to get creative. Uh, this is on a VE Day card, um, which is uh, the end of World War II. And this is a World War, World War II veteran. Um, he is part of the Monuments Men after uh, VE Day. And this is Mr. Richard Baransic. I believe I said that right. And signed the two for World War II and the VE uh, Day card, which is amazing. So let's go ahead and get this in the book. And he's gonna sit under another World War II guy, oh, Herschel yeah. Williams. Next, we have a set that I have started. Um, I actually created this set myself. I had the idea and I was like, well, I've had this idea. I have to jump on it now because these guys are really old in age and several of them have passed away. But surprisingly, I think more than half, uh, I was actually able to print off. Uh, oh, I didn't print these off. I had these customs made. Um, this is a Roger Maris 61 home run set. So I made a card for every home run that Roger Maris hit. Um, and the guys that were still alive, that's the ones I printed off. And two here by Gary Bell. And Gary Bell actually gave up home run number six in the 1961 season and home run 22. Gary did not sign them on the front. He signed them on the back, um, but that's okay. It's gonna happen. Um, but this is my first success from the Roger Maris set. Also numbered the cards with the home runs, along with the games and the, even the inning that it was hit. So uh, love these cards. Hopefully we get a lot more back soon. 
but uh, made these cards myself with the Rookies app. And just real happy the way they turned out. And we'll see how the signatures turn out. This one didn't turn out well with him signing on the back, but still very happy to get that back. And the last TTM for today is a very cool one. And I sent him two items. I sent him these two things right here. This is Mr. Paul Goldsmith. I sent him this Legends card here and also this stamp card that I created. It's got the foil outlining and you can put any stamp in there to have the person sign if they're related to the subject. Um, one of my early ideas when I got back into TTMing with my daughter. So uh, sent these two out, signed them beautifully. Paul is a legend in racing. Um, I believe the Daytona Beach course, which was a very famous course, he was the only person to win that race with a stock car and also a motorcycle. Back in the day, they didn't just race one thing, they usually raced multiple things. Um, so Paul signed these two beautifully and then did, he just went above and beyond. Uh, he's in his 90s, way up there in age, and for him to do this is is amazing. Uh, sent these photos himself, so signed these two uh, to Penelope, uh, just old school photos of him racing, um, and then also signed these two. So this is him, and I'm not sure who these people are. Um, maybe this is another racer, maybe his family. Uh, but sign this older photo of him um, and this really cool one of him on a motorcycle, which is amazing. So uh, sent all those himself, uh, just big props to Paul. Uh, my daughter will love these and just when guys go above and beyond like this, it really means a lot. And uh, that's why he's the last for today, a, a racing legend and a TTM legend for doing this. Um, so Paul Goldsmith, just a, a really good guy. All right, let's go ahead and get out our oddball and score Fleer uh, Donruss Archive project. All right, for the Donruss Fleer score archive project that needs a better name, uh, this one actually has its first 1983 archive. So that's gonna go up here. Uh, we do have Andres Galarraga down there uh, yeah. with the certified auto. That one you did, uh, you guys did not see because I don't show purchases anymore. But it is the blue color, so it kind of goes in the back. Um, not gonna put it up front with the ones who actually look like the uh, the originals. And then we're gonna go ahead and put Jerry Lawler in the back here. I guess I'll give him a page just in case I get some more wrestlers on those heritage cards. Um, so this is on the wrestling heritage card. So we'll get that in right there. Booyah! Now to Goofball. All right, in Project Goofball, we have Mr. Greg Gagne. Going to be put right ne here next to Steve Garvey and Spooky Booyah! the Bear. Then we have Lou Pinella on the Oddball teams. So uh, Sweet Lou is going to go over here in the oddball team section, which is filling up pretty fast. Uh, pretty easy to get these oddball teams and fun. So oh, yeah. he's gonna sit under Mr. Robert Parrish. All right, guys, that's the video for today. Remember to go check out shuffletrades.com to possibly get this Hulk Hogan certified auto in a trade. Um, shuffletrades.com and I'll tell you exactly the rules and how to do it. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed and you take care, all of you autograph addicts.